try to understand guys one thing over there so we have a two branch office okay um, simple recording so we get uh, guys, uh, we have a two branch. We have a Cisco Delhi, right? So the one company we have a Cisco, right? And Cisco has a two branch office, right? One we have a Bangalore location, and one we have a Delhi location. One minute. Okay. At the same time, we have a, another branch location. We have a Nokia, right? So this is the Nokia company. And Nokia has a two branch office. One we have in the Bangalore location and one we have in the Delhi location. Now, try to understand if I want to just provide the communication between these two guys, right? I want to provide the communication between this subnet 1.0.0 slash 8 to this guy 3.0.0 slash 8. What happened? I need to take a help of the ISP, right? I need to take a help of the ISP. Same thing, what happened? If you want to provide the communication between these two subnet, right? Uh, 2.0.0, Nokia Bangalore and uh, Nokia Delhi. What happened? I need to take a help of the ISP. So it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if you're going to provide the communication between the one office to the another branch, right? One location to another location, or one location to another location. Uh, even the between the companies, we need to take a help of the ISP. There's no, right now, there's no problem in this connection, right? In this setup, there is no problem. Of course, we need to take a help of the ISP, right? To provide the communication. But try to understand what happened Try to understand what happened. What I'm saying that he, I want to secure or not secure. I want to just extend this information only to the Cisco, right? This is the upside is running with the Cisco company, right? This, this router on number one is Cisco. And this router number two is Cisco bank. And we have a Cisco Delhi. Same thing, we have a Nokia Delhi. And we have a Nokia Bangalore. Right? If you want to exchange this information 1.0.0 slash 8 from Cisco Bangalore to the Cisco Dolly, you need to take a help of the ISP, right? But the problem is that, you know, I'm sending my all LAN information to whom? The router number one, that is the Cisco, is sending the LAN information to the ISP. Same thing, the Cisco Delhi is going to send the own LAN information to the ISP. And Nokia is going to share the online information to the ISP and also same way this guy as well as. So whatever the routes they have, they need to exchange this information to the ISP. Right? That's good. Because I'm taking connection with the ISP, I need to exchange my information. But take example, what happened if this person is going to run with the EHRP routing broker, or any of the routing broker? In this case, what happened? I need to share this information to the ISP or what ISP is going to do in this case? ISP is also going to share this information to the Nokia branch. This ISP is also going to share this information to the home, Nokia Delhi, right? And if they have another company, Accenture, right? Take example, this is a router number six, this guy is Accenture. So now this information, one or zero or zero information that is coming from the Cisco land office, this information also extends to the Accenture as well as. At the same time, if you have a different company, for example, Microsoft. So you are going to share this information 1.0.0 that belongs to the Cisco. You are also going to share this information to the Microsoft. ISP is what? ISP is a public network, right? On a public, what happened? We have some good user and we have some bad user. On a public, what happened? We have some good user or bad user as well as. What I want in my case, I want like, if I'm going to share this information, this information is only access to whom? Not to the this guy, not to the this guy, not to the this guy, not to the this guy. What I can do in this case? I can do one thing. I can inform to the ISP. Hey, ISP, do one thing. Just give me the one separate infrastructure. Just give me the one separate infrastructure. And same way, 
Nokia is going to say that, hey, just give me the one separate infrastructure to me as well as because I cannot share this information, my own LAN information to the any other person. What happens is saying that, hey, just give me the one separate infrastructure so that I can share the own information to the only the own branch office. And Nokia is saying that, hey, just give me the one separate infrastructure so that I can share the own information to the only own branch office. So what ISP is doing, ISP is like, hey, okay, let's do one thing, take it to the one separate infrastructure, right? But what is the problem is happening in this case? Cost. And what do you think? Is it a scalable solution? No. The first problem is that I need to exchange, right? I need to exchange this information 100000 only to the Cisco Delhi, right? I need to exchange this Nokia Bangalore office information to the only Nokia Delhi office, right? In that case, what happened? We need to take a separate infrastructure. Again, in the separate infrastructure, what happened? We need to implement the cost over there and this is not a scalable solution. Because normally what happened, if you're not going to use, right? If I'm not going to use this solution, right? Separate infrastructure, in that case, what happened? Router 5 is going to maintain the global routing table because EIGRP is running over there. And this EIG, this router number 5 is going to maintain the global routing table. So whatever the information is coming to me, I can save this information to this person, this person, and this person as last. To every person, if you have a thousands of the company that is associated with ISP, all the thousands of the company will receive this information. All the thousands of the company will receive Nokia branch information. And do you know one thing? If the any bad user are present over there, if the bad user will get the idea about this network, right, 4.0 and 2.0, the LAN information, they can perform any kind of attack. They can do the DOS attack as well as. They can deny your services if they know about your network. You are sharing, right? The customer is sharing the information to the ISP. Why? Because they need a connectivity. Why should I share my own information to the different company? Listen to me. Why should I share my own information different to the company? It is something like this. There's a person over there. This person name is uh, ABC and his contact number one, two, three. His age is what? 49. He's belong to the, like, you know, the Bangalore HSR layout. So he can share the own information to whom? The government authority, right? Government official. But they cannot share this information to the any other guy. This guy cannot share the own information to any other guy, right? But they can share the own information to the government. Same thing happened with this case. I can see it. I need to share my own information to the ISP, right? But I cannot share own information to the different companies. I can only share my own information to the own branch location, not to the different company. If the different company will get the idea, for example, if the R2 will have an idea about the 1.0.0 and 3.0.0 that's associated with the Cisco, the Nokia, Nokia users right, can perform an attack in their network. They can do anything, right? They can perform a DOS, a DOS means what? Denial of service attack. They can deny your services, right? So to avoid this problem, what happened? We can do the separate infrastructure, but in the separate infrastructure, what happened? The cost, and that is not a scalable solution. So to avoid the solution, what we can do over there, we can, Segregate your routing table. Segregate.
with companies for example i can say on the router number 5 right now how many routing tables they have on the router number 5 on the router number 5 right now what happened we have a, this routing table the global routing table Why I'm saying this global routing table? Because this routing table is going to maintain the in of the all the customer by default. By default means what? If the custom, if the R1 is going to share this information, I can put this information into the this one. It is something like one minute. And let's do like this. This guy R1 is going to share the only information to the this routing table. R2 is going to share the own information to the, this routing table. R3 is going to share the, this information to this routing table. And R4 is going to share this information to the, this routing table. And whatever the companies you have, if you have a 1000 company, take example, all this 1000 company is going to share this information to the global routing table. So what I'm going to do I am just going to segregate, right? I'm just going to segregate this routing table. How do I do that? I just said, let's do one thing. I'm going to segregate this routing table into this section, okay? And this section, like this, we can do that. This one and this one and i can say that okay this portion is belong to the home this portion is going to belong to the cisco this portion is going to belong to the nokia and remaining portion belong to the global so whatever the route that is coming from the cisco it only is stored in the cisco information right for example 100000 2.0 it's only present in the cisco the Nokia information is only present in the Nokia. This guy, 2.0.0 and 4.0.0. And the global is only present in the global. What are the globals we have? Remaining route that is coming from the different companies. So all this information, right? All this information, what is the information that belongs to the Cisco? Cisco, I'm going to put in the Cisco routing table. I'm going to put the Nokia routing, Nokia information in the Nokia routing table. And the remaining route will be present in the global routing table. I'm going to segregate my routing table information. It is something like that. We are going to segregate our layer three information by using a VRF. By using a VRF, we are going to segregate our routing table. It is same like your VLAN guys, ditto like your VLAN. What VLAN is doing over there? It's segregating your MAC address table, right? Every VLAN, for example, this is the one MAC table for the VLAN number 10. This is the one MAC table for the VLAN number 20, and this is the one MAC table for the VLAN number 30, right? So MAC table for the VLAN number 10, MAC table for the VLAN number 20, and MAC table for the VLAN number 30. So we are doing VLAN Y. 
to just segregate our MAC address table. Same thing, what we are going to do, we are going to do the VRF to segregate our routing table information. So what VRF is going to do, VRF is going to create a logical routing table. Same like your VLAN 10 is what they are doing. They are going to create a separate logical MAC table, separate logical MAC table and separate logical MAC table. Same way by using the VRF, what I can do, I'm going to segregate the routing table information. How do I create the VRF on the router side? The first thing, how do I create the VLAN? We just need to go on the router, sorry, switch side. I need to put the command VLAN number 10, right? What this command is going to do? This command create the VLAN. On a VRF side, I just need to say that IP. IP means what? I'm doing the configuration for the IP protocol. That IP protocol can be IPv4 and IPv6 as well as so I need to define the IP and then after that I need to define the VRF, the keyboard that I'm going to create a virtual routing table and the name of the virtual routing table will be Cisco. You can take any name, it's totally up to you guys. You can take the Cisco 123, you can take the Cisco 1, you can take the 123, whatever you want. It's just a name of the table, of the routing table name. This is the name of the routing table. And after that, I say the exit over there. That's it. Same way, IP VRF table, Nokia. Depend on the name of the company, I'm going to take the, I'm going to create the routing table. If you just have a look, let me see. Can get the IP. I want to do one or two. 31, right? One If you see right now, I'll show you this thing. By default on a switch side, what happened? We have a single Mac table, right? Depend on the VLAN, because by default they have a single VLAN. So you can correlate each and every words of the VRF with the VLAN, every single thing. So if you see show Mac address table, what happened? I have a single Mac address table, right? I have a single MAC address table. What I'm going to do, I see the VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20, 30. Show MAC address table count. One minute. And just say this. You see? What happened? So we have a separate MAC table for what? Separate MAC table for what?
same thing guys we are going to do with the vrf the global routing table will be divided into the cisco routing table nokia routing table and the remaining global routing table i am going to divide the one routing table it is something like that by the vrf this is the one routing table this one routing table will be divided into the three sections whatever the de depend on the requirement right so this is the cisco routing table this is a nokia and this is the global so i am going to make a partition of the routing table and this routing table will be a virtual routing table that says the virtual means what vrf before virtual and based on this routing table based on this routing table i am going to forward the packet that's the meaning of vrf virtual means what this is percent sorry this is uh, you can see that but actually this is not percent right routing means what based on the on, in this routing table i'm going to store the route information for routing means what based on this virtual table i can forward the packet or i just need to create the vrf how do i do that i just need to go in the global configuration mode like that vlan 10 to make a identifier of the vlan the mac address table to identify the routing table we need to put the name of that to identify the routing table same like vlan id so what i am going to do guys try to understand this part if you just go open the router on 5 right now the isp that i have router no 5 and let's see the prediction of so ip interface brief you see all i have ip addressing right and if you see right now information is present in which table uh, your voice is breaking sir we can barely hear you we cannot hear you what me guys take me on to shift
Perfect. Nice clear. So what I will do on a router of five guys, if you just have a look right now, we all this information is present in the global routing table, right? Every single information is present in my global routing table. And if you see where the verify the router one configuration right now, this router one, two, three, and four, all they have a proper IP addressing, right? Can you show the config, sir? Pre config. Yeah, I'll show you one minute. If you see the router one configuration. Show IP interface brief. Router number one. Right. On a router number two, if you see the Nokia Bangalore, right? This office. If you just go back to the router number three, that's a Cisco Delhi. And if you go back to the router number four, Cisco. Nokia Bangalore. Sorry, Nokia Delhi, this information. And what's the EIGRP configuration? So you've done EIGRP on it? No, nothing I've got right now. Nothing. I'm just giving the IP addressing info right now. Oh, okay. And then R5, then how are, how are the routes visible, sir? Uh, is there? So if you see, the R5 is going to maintain the, all this IP addressing, right? And the, oh. all this information is pointing on my routing table. So if you run oh. any of the routing table right now, just try to understand this part. If I'm just for the reachability, router EHRP number one, right? As a network 0, 0, 0. Take example, right now, I'm just trying to show you the problem. I'm just going to advertise all the route, right? And R5. What happened in this case? R5 is going to form the four neighborship. One, this guy, two, three, four. And what happened? Try to understand R1 is now able to share this information to the R3. They belong to the same company, right? At the same time, what happened? R1 is going to share the own information to the Nokia as well as, can you see? So Nokia, this Nokia branch office, right, R2, is having an information with the Cisco. So if they want to perform an attack, they can do attack any. They can do the denial of service attack. They can deny any of the services, right, that's belong to the, this submit. We need to avoid this problem. What I want, this information will never exchange to the, this person. I only want to exchange my own information to the, this guy. This guy to the, this guy only, right? Separate infrastructure. I want to only exchange this information to the, this guy only. Separate infrastructure for this guy. They cannot leak their information. For that thing, we need to segregate our routing table. I'm going to make a one separate routing table for the Cisco, one separate routing table for the Nokia. So in this Cisco routing table, you only have a, this information, Cisco information, 15.0, and 
in this Nokia information? We can use the two different. So tell me if you have a one lakh, or not one lakh, seventy thousand companies. Forget the seventy thousand company. If you have forty companies, how many EJP you are going to run? How many EJP you are going to run? Do you know the problems? See the problem. I'll show one minute. Give me one. I'll show you the problem. Hope if you remember this part. Swami, did you remember this part? What was that? Yes, yes. I think I can't remember the number exactly, but it kind of throws an error after. How much? Is it 30, sir? I can't remember. 15, 30. Ron does not have an idea of this number. Twenty-four? No, twenty-four. Not twenty-four. It should be twenty, thirty-one or thirty-two. Thirty. Devinder, you got the answer. Yes. I'm just going to start one little. I'm going to give a little bit of time. Stop. Stop. Right. So basically, what happened? You can see that R two is able to uh, listen this all information. Right. That I don't want. Now, why should I share my own information to you? Right. Why should I share my own information to you? It's totally uh, illogical. Second thing. Second thing is that you know one thing. Right. And what we are doing, we are just avoiding the. Separate infrastructure problem, guys. Try to understand. VRF is just avoiding the separate infrastructure problem. Otherwise, what happened? You need to implement the physical router over there. If you're if you're not going to use the VRF, you need to install the physical router on this guy and this guy. And if you have one thousand company, you need to implement the the ISP is going to implement the one thousand separate router for each company. That's not possible, right? For one thousand company, you need to require the one thousand order. If you have two thousand company, you need to require the two thousand order. Never possible. Not not possible even. So that's why we introduced the VRF. And do you know another reason? See, what did the RFC nineteen eighteen say that public and private address? The private address can be. Duplicate, right? So no, we'll get duplicate. Cisco is going to use the 10 or 0 or 0 subnet, and this Nokia is also going to use the 10 or 0 or 0 subnet. Which information R5 will install? The ISP router. If the router of five is going to have a one routing cable, which information they will install? 10, 10 from this side or 10 from this side? If the metric will be same, both information, load balancing. So if this user will send a packet to the Cisco, what happened? This packet is also coming to the Nokia.
So what happened in RFC 1980? Private address can be duplicate. Low ho gaya, proof. Load balancing karo. The PC wants to set a, a packet to the what? 10 or 10 or 10 or 10. When this packet is coming to the ISP, what ISP is going to do? To this one and this one. This this kind of problem also will be avoided by the VRM. How? I'm going to make a Cisco routing table over there, and I'm going to make a Nokia routing table. So this information 10.0 is coming to the Cisco. Bull. Last question. I'm bull and I saw now. R, G, R, Proxy, R. This is a pun. Kapan. This is a good idea. Kaldu. Basic R to Kal a lecture of Prahatavi. Kal team and a lecture of Kalka. Take a R Kal. Her gratitude is after Durki Vatavi. Take it. So a camker method to bachelor the top. Take it. Bachelor. Equal. 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 Time sake with another medical luma. So, what we can do, guys, with the VRF, we can segregate our routing table. So, now in the Cisco, I'm going to make a 10 or 0 or 0, and Nokia, I'm going to make a 10 or 0 or 0. So, if this user will send any packet, what happened? If this user will send a packet from the Cisco, it only listened by the Cisco routing table. If the user will send the packet to the Nokia, it only listened by the Nokia routing table. So now there is no chance of, you know, the like a packet, uh, the snipping of the packet. There's no chance. No one can see your packet. And you can done with the VR. How do I create the VR? The first thing, right? How do I create the VR? Same concept like a VLAN, right? If you have a knowledge of the VLAN, this VR concept is become very, very easy. How do I create the VLAN? You just need to go on the config terminal, VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20. I like this, right? Same way, I need to get the IP VRF Cisco. IP VRF Nokia. So right now, if you just have a look right now, on router number five, I don't have any VRF, right? If you see, I don't have nothing I have. I just have a routing table. In my routing table, I just have a route information. What I'm going to do, I just need to say that debug IP routing, IP VRF. What define the name? Cisco. What happened? Routing table Cisco has created, right? How many tables we have right now? Two active tables. One is a global routing table. And one is a Cisco routing table. What is a global routing table? That they have a routes over there. And what is the Cisco routing table? Same thing, I need to create the another routing table, VIP, VRF, Nokia. Now, three routing tables we have. This is just a name, and this name is, guys, this name is a case sensitive. I'm telling you, many person is doing the mistake in exam just of the name of the VR, many person. Once we have done with this part, what we are doing in the VLAN? Once we have done the VLAN number 10, 30, 20, IPVR of Cisco and IPVR of Nokia, what we are doing after that? In the VLAN, you need to say that interface 0 slash 0, switch port access VLAN number 10, right? Same thing in the VLAN of 30, switch port X interface 0 slash 0.
same way what i am to do how many interface that is belong to the nokia right now how many interface that is belong to the nokia see this stop losy right on this isp set this interface right 1 slash 0 and this 2 slash 0 is belong to the which person nokia and this two interface is belong to whom cisco so what i am going to do under this interface right interface 0/0 i need to tell this person hey this interface is now going to be part of vrf which person this interface is now going to forward the packet right this interface is now going to forward the packet based on the cisco routing table same way this interface is now going to forward the packet based on the cisco routing table this interface 1/0 is now going to forward the packet based on what this interface i am done so now what happen after that try to understand this part if i am going to put this command try to understand copy whatever the ip address is associated with the this interface right 0/0 automatically they will remove from the interface and they remove that routes from the routing table as well as so read this line interface fast ethernet 0/0 that i called in the vrf forwarding cisco so this interface 0/0 ip address 15.5 is removed due to the enabling the vrf cisco now this interface is the part of cisco and now i need to define the ip address so right now if you just have a look right now one minute do so ip vrf can you see in the vrf cisco i have this interface do we have a ip address on this interface right now no i need to assign the ip address right so interface 0/0 ip address will be what what i am going to assign this interface what happen in the routing table cisco this route will be added in the routing table of cisco this route will be added same way what i can do i see that interface Zero slash one. This guy, right? IP. We are forwarding what? Cisco. IP address. Sir, you have to uh, assign the IP addresses again, is it? Of course, if the IP address has removed now. See, read this line. Oh, okay. So it all got removed when we enabled. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, well, you put one ninety two dot sixty eight. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
I can do also like this, you know, I can do also like this. In exam, you have to do like this configuration of the VRF. Do show run interface one slash zero. This one slash zero. What I can do, I know the IP address of this person one slash zero is 25.5. Interface one slash zero. IP VRF forwarding Nokia, right? The IP will be removed from this interface and then just need to copy. And you have to do like this step in the exam. Because in exam, what happened? In exam, what happened? You will this this thing will be not written right this way. I think so. I'm not hundred percent sure. This poster is written, but they are configured with the slash thirty six. So most of the time, what happened? The engineers get confused. If they don't have a good submitting skill, they will get confused over there, right? So you can do one thing whenever you're assigning the IP in a VRF. First, make that do so run section interface. Then put the IP VRF forwarding Nokia. And this copy this IP address and paste it over there. So there is no chance of error over there in this case. There is no chance of error. Same way, what I can do now this interface two slash zero IP VR forwarding. Just make it a do show run, right? Now I see the IP VR forwarding what Nokia. Copy this guy. That's it. So now if you see do show IP interface brief, I all have IP addresses, but this IP interface is belong to the which part? VRF. Cisco, zero slash zero, zero slash one, Nokia, one slash zero, and two slash zero. If you just have to do show IP root, this command, it will show you the global routing table. Do we have any information in the global routing table? No. Because now this route is also this interface IP is route is associated with the particular routing table. So do show IP root VRF Cisco, my Cisco routing table. They have this information 35.0 and 35.0, uh, 15.0 and 35.0. And if you check the do show IP routing rules, Nokia. Twenty-five and forty-five. All good. So can you see that I'm not going to leak the information. The routing table Cisco has a separate information and routing table Nokia has a separate information. Now tell me one thing. If I'm going to create a one loop back, interface loop back number one, IP address 505.05.05.05, on which routing table this router will be added? Global. Global. Do show IP root. Can you see? So this is how you can verify the VRF so IP VRF you see this command is going to tell you how many VRF that you have created and how many interface uh, that is associated with the particular VRF show IP root VRF this is the command to check the VRF routing table Cisco. What is this guy saying that? Case sensitive, right? So 
So make sure that if you putting the wrong VRF information, right? Sorry, wrong name of the VRF, they will not going to show you any output. This is the small things that you always remember. If you are troubleshooting of the VRF, make sure that your name should be correct. If your name is not correct, what happened? You're not able to achieve any single output. The name should be seen. Show IP. We are. Okay, that are, this is, these are the informs that belong to the, you know, the MPLS part that I'm not going to discuss right now. So in the Cisco, we have uh, these two things. So connected address are not in the global routing table. This part I'm going to discuss later on. Don't worry. What is the default RD, VPN ID, this concept in the, you know, MPLS part. So IP VRF. What is Cisco? So brief command. Same information. So IP VRF ID. Which ID is this one? VPN ID is talking about. Interface. So these are the commands of the verification, right? So IP VRF interface. So this two interface right now is not a part of the global routing. Can you see it's also written over the connected address are not in the global routing table. Which which interface? This interface. Now because they are associated with the which routing table now. Same way. Hope this thing is clear to all of you guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Anyone has the questions? Till this point, any config, any have any questions in the configuration point view? So how do I create the VRF and interface? No. It's clear, right? Now let's do one thing. Let's perform the routing on the VRF side. You can achieve the routing in the two ways as we know that the, we have a static routing. And one we have a dynamic routing. In a static routing, what happened? You need to define each and everything manually that we know that. Right and dynamic routing. What happened? We need to use some protocol. Protocol could be a GRP, OSP, or BGP. RIP you can also use. Let's see the how we can define the static routing. So what happened? I just need to provide the communication between these two subnets. Right, this guy to this guy right now. And let's do one thing. Also, I'm going to create the one loop back. This should be duplicate, right? So that we can easily achieve the beauty of the VRF, right? Interface look back now to 10 or 10 or 10 or 10. So this IP will be duplicate on the Cisco Bangalore and in Nokia as well as Nokia. Interface look back number two. Same IP. What I'm going to do on a R1, right? How many network instruments I need to define? On a R1, I need to define the IP route. I want to provide the communication 35.0. Right. Next stop will be from R1. If you now provide the communication between these two subnet, right? First, I I need to define the route path for this person, and then this person, right? IP route. Done. All good, right? Same thing from R3. On R3, how many paths I need to define? This guy, this guy, this guy. IP root. IP root.
Five minutes. Done. See the this client R two normal static routing you need to do on the client side. IP route. So now R two we need to define this path, right? There's two guys, right? Forty five and four. But they are in that VRF routing table, right? This route. sorry, on the customer side, we are not doing the VRF. Okay, okay. Customer side, we are not doing the VRF, right? R three, sorry, R four. On R four, we need to define this path, right? This one, this one, this one. That what about the ISP now? On an ISP, we need to define this path, this path. If you're going to put this command IP root, what happened? Tell me if I'm going to put this command, what happened on the router on five? Will this router on five is able to install this route in the routing table? No. Why? Because IP route one dot zero dot zero dot zero. Global routing table. Of course, they will install this route in the global routing table, right? That's the default because this command is going to tell you, hey, you need to install this route in the global routing table. My question is that will router five install this route in the global routing table? Uh, any routing table, not the global, any of the routing table. See. Is any debug is happening? I don't have this route in the global routing table. Anyone uh, tell me the answer of this question? Why? Actually, it will not see the you know, next hope interface. Exactly right. And, uh, this uh, next hop is not reachable. From the global routing table, this next hop is not reachable. That's why I'm not able to put this out in the global routing table. Because this interface, this subnet is a part of which routing table right now? This interface, VRF Cisco. And where are you defining the route? In the global routing table. So in this global routing table, can I reach this person from the global routing table 15.1? No. See, I cannot reach from the global. Because this interface is the part of Cisco, right? So reachability must be there of the next stop. I cannot reach. I cannot put this route in the routing. So I need to define this path in the VRF routing table. How do I do the IP root VRF, right? Which we are up.
dan Simbi Nokia Twenty not zero. Forty five or four, right? Now you can check your routing table information. Do show IP route VRF Cisco. I have all this information and do show IP route VRF. See the beauty. Okay, one minute, one minute, one minute. About 10 or 10, 10, right? Not the five, 20. See the beauty. This is the beauty of VRF. Segregate your routing table information. Two different routing tables. So can you just do show IP road VRF Nokia and VRF Cisco, sir, once without the static? So it is hmm. showing that 45 and 25. I'll put this screen for one minute. I'll put this screen so you can verify this thing. So, same way we have a global routing for the uh, sorry, global Mac table for the Mac VLAN 1, Mac VLAN 10, Mac VLAN 20. And now we're on 30, right? Same way. Okay. I don't know. Quotes. I'll just remove this quote right because this quote is taking some space. See, so I'll remove this quote. See, now let me know if you have any questions. The beauty, beauty, beauty. You know, right on the command, I can see post the command as plus.
so I can start a configuration. So this is the configurations, right? And this is the Swami Hiller. Yes, sir. Yes. Now understand the flow. Try to understand if I'm going to ping from R1, right? I say the source will be what? 101.1. Destination will be 3.3.3.3.3.3.3. When this packet is coming to the router number one, what router one is going to do? Behavior of the router one, always perform the destination lookup in the router given. Do we have a 3.3.3.3? .3 According to my routing table, yes. I need to forward the packet to whom? 15.5. Again, it, what happened, it will perform the recursive lookup for the 15.5. Hey, where's the 15.5 is located? The 15.5 is located via which interface? This interface, the router one is going to perform the recursive lookup and based on that, it will forward the packet to whom? 15.5 from this interface, right? R5 will receive this packet on which interface? Zero slash zero, right? Zero slash zero is the part of which we are. Cisco, right? So what happened instead of looking the global routing table, instead of looking the global routing table, now this person is going to look up the VRF routing table. Routing table Cisco, and now I need to forward the packet to the 35.3. Where is the 35.3 is located? I mean, which interface? Not in the global routing, so IP root VRF Cisco. 35.3 is located by the 0 slash 1, and 0 slash 1 is the part of which VRF Cisco. So now it will forward the packet to whom? R3. R3 will receive this packet. And it will create the reply packet, right? Reply packet will be source will be what? 3.3.3.3.3 and destination is 1101, right? It will follow the packet by looking at the destination lookup, right? R5 will receive this packet on this interface 0 slash 1. 0 slash 1 is the part of which we are at Cisco by looking the Cisco routing table. I need to follow the packet to the home 15.1. Again, perform the recursive lookup. I need to use this interface to forward the packet. This is how your VRF, right? Your VRF routing table is going to interact with the packet. So now if you see, on an R1, I can ping this person, right? Ping source. Uh, to ping right all my packet is going uh, is being forwarded by the vrf routing table router 5 is uh for being forwarded this packet by the r5 vrf routing table not the global routing table same way if you're not paying, good to go. If you're not paying from here to here, from this client, take example, R3, I'm pinging whom? 10 on 10 on 10. What do you think? This packet is coming to the, this person, not to the 
Nokia. Nokia also have seen information right 10.00. Zero zero. But this packet is coming to the R3. Why? Because this packet is received by which interface? 0 slash 1. And 0 slash 1 is a part of which we are of Cisco. So it will look up the Cisco routing table. And based on the Cisco routing table, it will follow the packet to whom? 15.1. Not to the other person. Not to the other person, I need to forward the packet to the home Cisco routing. Through the Cisco routing table, I need to forward the packet to the 10 or 0. This is how your VRF is going to work, guys. Sir, one minute. Um, so when uh, when you ping from R3, it will be received on R5, correct? R5, R5 which will... interface? 0 slash 1, right? Right. And 0 slash 1 is a part of which VRF? Okay. Cisco, so it will look up the Cisco routing table. Okay, got it. So when you do not give the source, what will happen? So if so you nothing just give... will happen, nothing will. Happen. Source will be your exit interface, right? Always. So will it ping still, right? Yeah. Because fifteen dot one is also part of year of. Yeah, it will ping. No issue. Any questions, anyone? Anyone has any questions in the configuration line or anywhere? You can ask me to the configuration, right? IPv of Cisco, interface 0 slash 0, call this VRF, same like a VLAN, here the VLAN and call that interface into the VLAN. And then you configure static routing basically to all the exit interfaces, correct? In the sense, I didn't get your questions. So you've configured static routing. Yeah. Um, towards all the exit interfaces only, right? Towards like for 1.0. Next stop. Next stop. Next stop. Next, next, stop. Uh, next stop. Next stop. Sorry. You can use the exit interface as well as it's suit here to you. You can use the next stop as well as sorry exit interface, or you can use the combination of as well as next stop and exit interface. It's like, you know, you, you have to configure yourself, right? This thing, right? Okay, I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to use this thing. The concept of VRF is simple like segregate your routing. Okay. So now the Cisco cannot communicate with the Nokia and Nokia cannot communicate with the Cisco. I default. If you know what, if you want to provide the communication with the some companies, for example, company E can communicate communicate with the company B, but company B cannot communicate with the company C, you can do like this as this. Then you, in that case, you need to do the licking of the VRF route licking. But the default behavior is that they cannot communicate. Like in the VLAN, what happened? The VLAN 10 can communicate only with the VLAN number 10 user, right? They cannot communicate with the VLAN number 20 user. If you now provide the communication between the VLAN number 10 to 20, what happened? You need to create an inter-VLAN routing. Right, same way you have to do VR route linking. If you know, perform the communications between the between two com two companies, or we can say between the two different VRF. Between the two different VRF, you know, provide uh, provide the communication. You need to do the VRF route linking. That we'll discuss. Don't worry. Okay. If you know, provide the communication between A to B. Company A to the company B. Same like a VLAN number 10 to 20. What happened? We need to do the inter VLAN routing. My concept is just right now giving the how to like how to enable the VRF. That's it, right? Because the topic of the uh, VPN part, right, is coming with the, some VRF concept. That's why I taught you the VR. So don't worry, tomorrow I'm going to discuss about the, this VR part, VR with the dynamic routing protocols, right? And uh, then I will teach you the VPN part, VPN with the VR. How we, VPN with the VR app, then VPN with the IPsec is uh, still pending, right? Uh, DMVPN over IPsec. Dynamic is what will be on the lab, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dynamic in the lab. 
What is VRF light, sir? Then yeah, this is the VRF light. Oh, this is VRF light. Okay. V dot. Sorry, what was that? चलो एक टास्क हो गया चल लेट्स राइट ऑन दिस व्हाट इज फ्रंट वी आर आ गया एफ वी आर ऑल गुड एनी क्वेश्चंस एनीवन Did you ever notice how you give these assignments and then you never follow up on them? Nah, uh, you did. No, you know, you have to inform me first of all, right? Then I'm going to follow up with you. You, you have to inform me, right? You asked this like a, you asked this about a month ago. The, about you know, which what, task that I asked that? Overlay versus underlay. Ah, uh, so that 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 overlay versus underlay. I I gave you the task that you need to find the difference between that. This is the things that I'm going to cover. In I found it a month ago. So that is the part is coming in the front we are have that's the part of the front we are right what is the difference between the overlay and underlay uh, sorry what is the disadvantage of the overlay that or uh, this advantage will be overcome into the front we are <laughs> just say it i know you should don't worry <laughs> okay i'll give you the one more task okay, don't worry i just find the meaning of this person T7 बता दो स्वामी क्या होता है व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ T7 ओके लेट मी पॉज रिकॉर्ड इट व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ T7 स्वामी T7 इज दैट व्हाट इज दैट 